Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Let's go ahead and get started on this cool mic. This is the head basket for the Bubble Fet project. You're going to need a little masking tape and an X-Acto knife to do this job the right way. Take your time, be meticulous. Remember to cover anywhere that you don't intend to sand or paint. Now that we're done taping the head basket, we're going to put a second layer on the inside as a precaution. I'm going to use cotton pads, not cotton balls. I want to make sure that whatever I put in comes out and doesn't leave any remnants. If you get anything or leave anything in there, you're likely to have problems. Now this part is crucial. We need to make sure that we don't get any paint on the threads or any of the mounting points of the body. If you do, it's going to cause the chassis to not ground correctly, and you're going to get noise in your signal path. This is the main housing cover for the electronics, also known as the guts. We're going to pay close attention here and make sure no paint gets on the inside. If you do, it's going to be noise city. While we have access to the microphone, we're going to go ahead and give it a good clean. I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol, 91, and I'm only going to clean the contacts. Do not touch the diaphragm. You will destroy it. You want to remember to wear gloves as well. As you can see, we're touching crucial parts of the microphone, and you don't want to leave any finger residue. Let's go ahead and get this demo started. I'm going to use 220 grit and 1000 grit sandpaper. You can see the bottom ring there. I ended up leaving a little bit of the paint on it because I thought it looked cool like a lightsaber. And uh, this is kind of where the art starts taking shape. Now you want to do long even strokes when you're setting your paint here. And this primer doesn't need to go on thick because you're actually going to have to paint over the top. So good even coat here. Now Boba's mask has this really great red lining around where the eyes are. And because the head basket is black on the grill, I figured this was a good pairing. So obviously then the main housing took on the proportional color of the helmet. So here's where the real fun came in. We got to relic this thing and make it look like it was battle-worn. That was a lot of fun. We used that little pen knife in the background there and cut some of these long strokes along with the sandpaper that I used to scuff off some of the paint. Now, instead of just going crazy, I tried to come up with an idea, like I said, battle-worn, and then also make sure that some of the finer details were, were done. You can see that big mark there is like that left side gash on his helmet. And there it is, paired together, starting to come together. Now Boba's got these marks going down the side of his helmet in yellow. And initially I tried to use a brush, and it didn't give me the right texture, so I ended up moving to a sponge. So here's where art and function come together. I ended up placing these vertically down the back of the microphone, equidistant from each side. That way I could tell what the on and off axis was from a distance. This is going to be really helpful when I'm using it on drums, guitars, or anywhere where I'm placing the mic and I'm at the back. Now I'm sure there are those of you who are watching this video, you've made it halfway through and you're going, why is this dude doing Bilbo Fett in the first place? What does it even matter? Well, it's a little joke, okay? This microphone is a clone, okay? It's a clone of another microphone, but it has a very important trait. It's called an FET, a field effect transistor, okay? And this is what powers the microphone with voltage when you add phantom power or 48 volts. So now before we put the mic back together, we're going to sand all of the contact points in the body. We're going to remove any dust, dirt, debris, any paint related, <coughs> anything on there you want to get rid of. Okay? That's going to cause, you guessed it. Noise. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what happened when we were taking apart the stencil. Right here you can see this one goes perfectly. Just perfect. Okay? And the reason that this happened is I didn't give it enough time between the cure and doing the sanding and the painting, okay? So I'm looking at it here going, uh-oh, I'm in trouble and I might have to start again. I really don't want to because it's coming out really great. I have some other real cool textures going on at this point that you haven't seen yet. And I'm looking at it going, well, should I just throw it in the Sarlacc pit? And I think, well, Let's see how bad it is. And we go a little further, and here's the magic in doing something, these projects like this. It just stops there, and it kind of adds to the texture. And I'm looking at it going, you know, it works. If it was perfect all the way through, it wouldn't match the rest of the body. So before we put this together, we ended up putting a final sealer over it, just to make sure that the look stayed and it was robust when in use. Well, there he is, Boba Fett the mic, and I'm gonna throw up the shots that I used for inspiration when building this project. 
Those of you wondering about sound samples, well, you guessed it, I've been using Boba Fett this whole time. Guys, I really want to say thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.